വിശ്വാസത്തെ കാത്തു അതായിരിക്കും വെളിപ്പെടുന്നത് സെയിൻസ് ഓഫ് ഗോ ഓൺ ദാറ്റ് ഡേ ആ നാളിൽ വാട്ട് വിൽ റിട്ടേൺ അൺടു ഹിസ് ഗ്ലോറി കർത്താവിന്റെ മഹത്വത്തിന് വേണ്ടി കാണുന്നു വാട്ട് വിൽ ബി ഓൺ ഡിസ്പ്ലേ ആസ് ഹിസ് ഗ്ലോറി തന്റെ മഹത്വത്തിന്റെ പ്രദർശനമായ കാണുന്നു ഇസ് നെവർ മൈ അച്ചീവ്മെന്റ്സ് യുവർ അച്ചീവ്മെന്റ്സ് for the glory of god that is not that is not glory devathinte mahathathnaya endu veli vaagunu amen may god open our eyes devu nammada kannugal thorakkumaru it's not our jobs it's not our possessions joliyo it is not our wealth namukulla it's not our riches namukulla dhanam it is not our degrees nammada birudhangalo true god would have blessed us with all this deiva ee karyangale kanna kanna anugrahichu but they are not going to be on display on the coming of christ nal karthava yesu krishnanna varavengil adonnu aayirikkilla velippadu but your faith that is tried in fire where you came into the conformity of the son through sufferings ningalde jeevan hallelujah that's going to be on display ningalde jeevano May God help us. Warnings came to God's people. Jeremiah said very clearly to God's people. Let not pride overtake your lives. God has spoken. Where we got it? കർത്താവ് സംസാരിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് Yes. But God was faithful to raise up a voice like Jeremiah in the midst of apostasy among God's people. Deiva janangalde madhyathrola vishwasa tyagathinte madhyathil Eremiyavine polla oru shabdatha uyarthunnathil deivam vishwasam. A man who was a weeping prophet for the people of God. Vila vekkuna oru pravadhanayirunnu than janangalkkayi. And I believe God will raise up men in these end times who will stand in the gap and weep for God's people but speak the warnings to God's remnant in these end times. Deiva janangalkkayi vellavichukonda deiva janangalde madhyathinte deivathinte munnarippe nalguna manushare deiva inaalukal ezhuthelpichu. Then again with Jeremiah chapter 13. നിങ്ങൾക്കേട്ടനുസരിക്കില്ലെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ നിങ്ങളുടെ ഗർവനിമിത്തം രഹസ്യത്തിൽ കരയും but if we will not hear it ningal kelkunna if you will not hear my warnings ende munnarippukala ningal kelkunnillengil which i send into your life because i love you yeah ningal snehikkunnond ningalde jeevathile because you are my people ketta anusarikkunnillengil because you are my people ningal ende janam aayirundu but if you will not hear my word എന്നാൽ എന്റെ വചനത്തെ കേട്ട് നിങ്ങൾ അനുസരിക്കുന്നില്ല but if we will not hear it നിങ്ങൾ അതെ കേട്ട് അനുസരിക്കുന്നില്ല my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride ഞാൻ നിങ്ങളുടെ ഗർവനിമിത്തം രഹസ്യത്തിൽ കരയും and mine i shall weep sore and run down with tears yeah because ശവം കരഞ്ഞ കണ്ണീർ ഒഴുകും because the lord's flock is carried away captive yehovah's ark kudathe pidichu kondu poyirikka yan etchum karanja kannil ullu yes pride garva characterizes many activities 
in the house of God and our lifestyle. Deva Pavanapala Pala Pravartanale Namada Jeevila Shine and Pinbil Garvamunda. Listen carefully. Why were people of God upset with the prophets who spoke the truth? In the days of Jeremiah, as we know, we have heard many times, there were many prophets. They spoke what the people liked. I want to do this. Okay, God bless you, do it. God is with you, brother. Go. Do what is in your heart. God will bless you. That's what majority of the prophets did. But there was a prophet of God who said, who said get rid of that pride that drives you doing your own thing. Yes. Why were God's people upset with such prophets? Many a time, the true prophets of God spoke things to them when everything was nice with their lives. They could experience God's protection. God fought their battles. God gave them victories. God blessed their oil and wine. God blessed them. But in the midst of all this joyful time, here comes a voice and warning them. We are being blessed in our lives. God is with us. That's why they were upset with the true prophet. In the midst of all these blessings, they saw a heart that is rising up in pride within them. So they saw what the children of Israel could not see. Israel Yes. And they brought a word of warning to God's people. But many a time, we know that we are not ready to accept such warnings into our lives. Yes. You see in the book of Acts and chapter 20, how Paul, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, could see with his prophetic eyes what was lying ahead for the church in Ephesus. Yes. He called for the elders. 
Verse 27. Please turn in your own Bibles. Please turn the pages to Acts chapter 20. And put your finger at verse 27. So that you read the right scripture. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. Over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. Which he had purchased with his own blood. For this I know, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Paul said two things. He saw with his spiritual eyes which that the leaders in Ephesus could not see. They could not see. But Paul being a father over them, a seeing eye and a hearing ear could see what was coming. He says, my time is come. I don't know whether I will see you again or not. But grievous wolves will come in. And secondly, people will arise among yourselves. Take the flock away. Yes. And see what he says, verse 31. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Warn. Warn every man. The vibrant, hungry church in Ephesus. The vibrant church that was so hungry for all that God has for them. Finally, they could not accept that warning. When we see the same church in the book of Revelation chapter 2. It's a tragedy. The vibrant church lost its place. Yes. My dear brothers and sisters. Certainly, God is very good and gracious a God to us. Listen carefully, my brothers and sisters. We have known and tasted much of His goodness in our lives in many ways. But 
Let us be careful that there is no pride that rises within us. Please. Humility and brokenness in our spirit is what God is looking for, His remnant in these end times. We always think about God being so very good and gracious. We do not care, we do not care to hear about his severity. We do not care to hear about his harshness. We do not care to hear about his sternness. Sternness. We do not care to hear about his strictness. We do not care to hear that. God is certainly good and gracious. Turn with me to a scripture in Romans chapter 11. Verse 22. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God. Both. That we do not want. We want to you know, remember what Paul says. Behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God. Yes. God is gracious. God is good. But remember, the same God is also a God of severity. Yes. Let's not forget that. Let me take a different translation. And it says, On them which fell severity, but continue in his goodness. But, uh, sorry, but toward the goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise, Thou also shall be cut off.
Say not unto me, sleep on. Say not unto me, sleep on. For the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Father, awaken me. For the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Father, 